Okay, so we're looking at the anatomy here on the graphic. You have the ovary, the fallopian tube, the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. Of course, in stereo, there's an ovary on each side, fallopian tube on each side, come together in the uterus. About every 28 days, the pituitary gland in the brain releases follicle-stimulating hormone. This, this starts the process of ovulation, and it does it by telling the ovary to begin to mature a few of those millions of eggs that are there and prepare them for ovulation. It also begins production of estradiol in that cell. So estrogen, estrogen goes up as this process moves on over the course of two or three days, and then it reaches a point where it triggers the pituitary gland in the brain again to release LH, or luteinizing hormone. And that says, okay, release that egg so the, the follicle opens up, spits the egg out, and then closes back up again. And then at this point, it begins to start making progesterone, changing over from estrogen predominantly now to progesterone. And that egg is caught up in the fallopian tube. The fingers encircle it and pull it in, travels the length of the fallopian tube. Progesterone now is growing more and more from that empty follicle. And then we have what ha the boy's contribution, okay? So we got a release of about 250,000 sperm. There's a lot because a lot of them don't make it. They're either defective or can't swim or shy, whatever you want to say. And it's a long journey. I mean, you go through the, the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, and clear to the other end of the fallopian tube, and they do it in about two and a half hours. But the egg has only 24 hours of life once it is uh, released by the ovary. So when that for, or that uh, fertilization occurs, then you've got implantation and then a placenta begins to, to form and it takes over with progesterone production. The, the follicle back in the ovary, it's, it's diminishing now until it finally completely dissolves and progesterone levels fall, estrogen levels fall from that source. And unless there is an implanted uh, egg, there is no more progesterone and that's what causes menses or your period, your monthly period. So as that falls off, we're back at day one. Day one again is the start of the period and then after about four days, four to six days in, you start this uh, ovulation process all over again.